Hello, everybody, and welcome to the August 9th Trips and Traps. Andy Sterling, Eric Donovan. We'll have four races to bring in this week, a lot of turf racing, one dirt race that was originally scheduled for the turf. So why don't we get started with race number eight from August 2nd, $20,000 claimer, two lifetime for Phillies and Mares a mile on the inner turf. This is an important race to look at to understand how a long shot winner was able to win and why the second placed winner didn't win. And the first good thing that happened for the long shot winner was the rider was aggressive. The second good thing that happened was the four horse in this race, You Won't See Me, who is absolutely supposed to be the speed in this race, a sprinter with some sprint speed stretching out uh, with Ramon Dominguez, was oddly taken back. The seven horse in this race, Forever Vow, tries to get into good position. Edgar Prado is doing nothing wrong. Unfortunately, because You Won't See Me is being oddly rated, she resists on the first turn, and she takes Forever Vow out of the race. Yeah, You Won't See Me resisted that, uh, resisted and you know, just didn't like being rated there and had to get outside and in the clear and, and run off a little bit, and that certainly uh, affect forever, affects Forever Vow, who gets taken out a couple paths uh, into the uh, far turn there, that uh, or the first turn, I should say, um, where otherwise he probably would have had to give a ground saving trip. Yeah, I'm sure it would have been the two path comfortably, but the other thing is the fractions were 24 and 2 and 49, and Arad Ortiz is to be applauded for riding properly. He sent his horse the lead. On the other hand, you won't see me. I don't know why you would bother to try to stretch this horse out to a mile if you're not going to try to use her speed as a weapon. So in not using her speed as a weapon, the pace becomes inordinately slow. You won't see me as put in a position she doesn't want to be in. We don't want her going forward. She'll probably be in a sprint from now on, but she wasn't given a fair chance. You, you want to find out, can she get distance going long? And of course, course, Forever Vow was totally taken out of position. Taken out of position and going to run into a little bit of traffic trouble here at the top of the stretch. Forever Vow in the blue cap and behind horses right there. And there's uh, you would see me who's the early pace setter there. And as we roll it there, you see some traffic trouble for Forever Vow. You wonder just if he was able to get a better position early on as he gets shuffled back a little bit there. Has to wait for some horses to clear out and comes with a big finish. You wonder if he had a better position early on if he wouldn't have had to deal with what he had to deal with at the top of the well, stretch. Well, if the four went, the silver machine would have finished likely nowhere because she's not a particular talented horse. She took advantage of circumstance here, so she wouldn't have been a factor in here. As you said before, Forever Vow would have been in a more forwardly placed position, or at least in a better position as the race came together, as it came apart, and she would have won this race. She was absolutely and clearly the best horse in this race, and this is how a long shot winner won. Listen, you take shots with long shots, that's great, and, you know, it's fine. You get a little bit lucky. That's that's the way the game goes, but there's no doubt Forever Vow, who's been kind of an unlucky horse, got an over-aggressive ride one day at Belmont when you liked her on Belmont Stakes Day, and this race she was supposed to win. Whether or not the same situation happens next time remains to be seen. Trouble seems to be following her around, that's for sure. Maybe yeah, next time she'll get a clean run. Yeah, if she does, if she does, she would beat this field. She's better than these horses. We'll find our second race now, also from the second. This is the finale, a maiden special weight for New York, where two-year-olds going a mile and 16th on the Mellon Turf Course. And then we'll pause it soon after the break here, and you see uh, the one, Sir Leslie, who's down inside. Doesn't break that cleanly, but also the two-horse comes in a little bit. That kind of affects Sir Leslie, even losing more ground there, and uh, will drop way behind the rest of the pack. Uh, Archer Hill, the eventual winner, who was bet out in this race as a first-time starter for Lisa Lewis at 5-2, to two, uh, settling up more close to the front of the pack. But... Quickly here, uh, Sir Leslie's going to make up some ground as they go into the first turn, already having gained back about uh, three lengths, I would say. Yeah, Sir Leslie does manage to get a little back in the race. It's hard to know with these horses, though, going forward, Eric, because it's a very odd two-year-old turf race where there was virtually no breeding in here yeah. for turf. So I wonder, coming forward, how good is this field? Yeah, that's a, that's a fair point for sure. Um, I like the middle move that uh, Sir Leslie's going to put in here. We'll see yeah. Sir Leslie get on the screen soon. Archer, uh, Archer Hill settling into a nice spot in the middle of the pack in here. Sir Leslie back there on the outside uh, in, the, in the white cap and see her kind of obstructed by the tree a little bit, but uh, <laughs> you'll see the move. The move is pretty... The move is the most impressive part of the race. There are two impressive things. The fact that Sir Leslie makes this big middle move and the fact that she ends up finishing last in here, or he does, I think it's kind of interesting because he did do this running during the race, the early trouble, and it's the kind of thing you like see going forward. A horse you know, I don't know how good he really is, but he's a lot better than it looks when his last place finish. But also, our Archer's Hill, just dramatically the best horse in this race. Yeah, I thought Archer Hill perhaps maybe was moved a little bit too soon. Um, you know, I guess if you think you're on the best horse, you, you want to get on the outside, you want to get in the clear, but there goes Archer Hill on the outside, making a sweeping four or five wide move in the uh, yellow and blue silks right there on the outside, and um, this is a big move on the turn for Archer Hill, and I, you know, I think this one might be okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. It depends how good the field is. You see him there, and of course, way back is Sir Leslie, who's wide and sort of dropping out of the race. On the other hand, Alex Elise tried the same move with a heavy favorite 
here on Monday, the turf horse uh, for Shug McGay air and support. air support, and that move blew up in his face. Doesn't work all the time, so you got to be sure. Uh, you, you know, you got to be sure what you have underneath you, and uh, you know, I, I see the point of, of wanting to get a clear run, not having to pick your way through traffic if you think you're, you know, you're on the horse to beat there. So, um, nice effort from Archer Hill. We'll see what we get from Sir Leslie next time out. Who, you know, since uh, since he finished so far back in the race, I got to imagine he'll be a good price. He didn't show really anything in his first race going seven furlongs made this middle move here going long not sure what his best game is going to be but uh you know i think he has a little bit of ability well as a new york bred i don't think he's rates to be facing monsters in races whether it's here or down at belmont park and he clearly as you said is a better horse than his finish suggests and he's the kind of horse you can take a shot with whether it means getting it somewhere the number to try super or somewhere we're trying obviously to win with it a big price but uh he's a little bit interesting going forward i think archer may be okay those those kind of moves to win with those kind of moves even in this race it's not the easiest thing to do move on to august 4th now race number four now winners one for new york breads going a mile on the inner turf course here tapadar the one we're interested in number two horse yeah the thing with tapadar another horse who finishes last uh is you're betting on faith your faith is that tapadar is a horse who in the past has shown ability and because he was fresh off the layoff first time for trainer jimmy bond uh and jimmy does such a good job you have to think that this is a horse that maybe second start gets back and gets a more comfortable trip and gets back to some of his best form yeah, this was his first start since uh since first start since october of last year so you know probably a race where uh, could have needed a little bit of a uh, little bit of experience a little bit of seasoning maybe and to get back uh, get back in the swing of things it's interesting that he was as rank as he was in this race because I don't remember him being this kind of horse, and it just feels like uh, he's just too fresh. He was too fresh for this race, and Javier Castellano is a very good rider. He could not control this horse. I, mean, I don't think that Javier's plan was to be rushing up and making a four-wide move with the three-eighths or seven-sixteenths ball. I just think he realized that this horse, he, he just he, he just wasn't good running his race today. Yeah, uh, you know, I wonder maybe if he's a little bit better covered up. I mean, the field is mm -hmm. a little bit spread out there at that point. Now it kind of bunches up together, and you can't really see him because he's blocked a little bit there uh, up on the outside but um you know kind of a race where you would think that uh probably you know gains from gains from this one. you know what's interesting the horse is second the outside in the green adjournment i understand this horse that won a turf sprint yet bobby barbera is running him long if he's going to run him long go to the lead mm -hmm. stop sitting on other horses i don't know whose decision it is or sprint him but they, if you're going to try to go along with them why do they keep doing this and there's tapadar dropping out of the field tapadar will finish last in here to me this is a complete throw out this is just a horse that needed a race off the layup now maybe you want to say i've liked tapadar and i've bet him a few times and he's been kind of unlucky in some spots and i'm giving him more leeway and deserves i'll give him one more chance that's it one more chance next time out he's going to get a more comfortable trip it's going to be a price and i think he's going to run well. I think he could be right there. He's an interesting one for sure. Definitely be a big price. Love the uh, last place finishes because no one likes these horses when they come back. Well, it's certainly only going to help your price in here. And the thinker, just to, to point out the winner of this race, an excellent ride by Jose Lescano. He was not going to lead, but when he sensed that the pace wasn't super fast, the situation, you saw him aggressively ride the first turn, and that's how you're winning race at Saratoga, by taking advantage of circumstance. One more race to bring you. Well, this is the sixth race from August 5th, made the special way for two-year-old fillies off the turf on the main track at seven for long going to take a look at the 9, tap 21. Yeah, I don't think we'll see a more ridiculous loser of a race this entire year in New York or any racetrack we look at as you circle his horse is settling back in the back. Doesn't come out that sharply, but he's a horse who's a bit sluggish. He was much better at the gate in the first time. The eventual winner, Skyfall, he was a little sluggish early, but the good thing about Skyfall was his rider kept him outside in the clear. Not the case with tap 21. No, tap 21 in behind the pack right now, and you know, when you're sitting behind the pack like this and, and, and you know, you're not really making up a whole lot of ground at this point, you have a couple decisions you can kind of sit back there and wheel to the outside when you come to the top of the stretch. Or you can kind of sit there and try to get cute and pick your way between horses. And just think a lot of the times it just doesn't work out where you think you're saving ground, you're doing the right thing, but you're going to run into some traffic. A lot of the times I just think you're better off going outside, especially when you have a horse with experience like this in a race where a lot of horses didn't. And, you know, and are the best horse on paper, it looks like. Well, also, it's a wet track. I mean, you probably want to be outside anyway. This is a horse who was just going to win this race and, and through absolute rider error doesn't win the race. Not looking to beat up in this rider, but she's struggling and uh, she's in a bit of a tough run. She's riding a lot of live horses and it's not getting done. Here's the point. She is supposed to be following the horse on the outside in the green. She's supposed to be getting herself out in the clear. She's riding a horse that if you saw this horse's first race, you knew you were sitting on a horse that can run. Instead, 
found trouble when there was no reason for it. Yeah, it tries to go inside here and uh, runs into some traffic trouble there and then uh, sits it behind those two leaders right there. Looks like looks like she's trying to get him get him outside, or her outside rather, but instead she uh, doesn't get through there and goes down to the inside and uh, comes down to the inside and actually looks like she scrapes up against the rail a little bit uh, at some point right about there when she goes down to the inside and of course the uh, winner here, uh, Skyfall with a good clear trip on the outside. Well, Skyfall is able to continue his her momentum the entire time whereas TAP21 is never allowed to get her momentum at any point in this race, yet she's still gaining at the end. And if she was out in the clear and able to get a clean run, she would have cruised to victory in this race, finding trouble when trouble didn't exist. And the trainer tried to get this horse onto the turf. I think this horse deserves chances on the dirt and will run much better. Now, the question is, will we see her at Saratoga? Will she go down to Keeneland? Will we see her at Belmont? There she was hitting the rail. This was just an unfortunate loser. And TAP21 has had trouble in both of her starts. Uh, this time, though, the trouble was not by her own making. And she's a horse that deserves and will win in all likelihood in her next start. Yeah, I'd imagine there's enough time to get her back into the races here at Saratoga before we leave. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if they put her uh, in on the dirt or in the, on the turf, because she certainly run two good enough races on the on the, on the on the dirt. But uh, this race, she was intended to run on the turf. So we'll see where, see where she goes. I think the turf was intentional because they wanted to go longer with mm -hmm. her. And that's the thing race came off became a seven for a long race regardless got to have your horses in position if they're going to do their best running that's it for us on this episode of trips and traps we'd love to hear your comments so send us some emails at trips and traps at naira thanks for watching